right, uh, good afternoon everyone. We're at this point of the day, I know uh, that everyone's energy levels are probably going down, so I'll try to keep this brief. Uh, a lot of you have worked with Pi for a very long time, so this is probably a refresher, but I wanted to make sure that, we wanted to make sure that everyone is uh, aware and clear of where we are in terms of our technology and also where we are going in terms of our roadmap for the future as well of, of the Pi system. Um, as Bernard mentioned, my name is Andrew Nathan, I'm a CD engineer, and I'll be talking about how Pi fits into a real-time data strategy for operations. Uh, the examples I'm going to be talking about are specific to refining, but the principles are applicable to any industry that both Pi and Sigma Fine work in. So it could be LNG, metals and mining, pharmaceuticals, so on and so forth. Okay, for those of you who don't know, we've been the leader in real-time data for nearly 40 years, uh, but Pi has grown and evolved. This one here. Pi has grown and evolved um, during this time from purely a data historian to a critical operations data infrastructure that it is today. So I'll talk about the modern Pi system uh, later, but I just wanted to give you an idea that 85% um, of the world's top oil and gas companies currently use Pi, and Pi is res responsible for over two billion real-time data streams, which is a lot of, of data. And if you look at oil and gas specifically, it's about 400 million to about 500 million. So about a quarter of that, of that two billion uh, comes from uh, oil and gas. Okay, so let's look at the traditional way a typical refinery interacts with Pi and real-time data. Um, all, all of you are familiar with this, there's data sources, real-time data is being sent to the Pi data historian, it gets stored as Pi tags, an end user then interacts with this real-time data in Pi tags in a spreadsheet like Excel via Pi data link, I'm sure. A lot of you Pi users have used data link before, so I'm not gonna go through it. Um, also, folks take this raw data from Pi into other operational um, software tools like those mentioned to do these sort of um, applications, all right? And then you can also have real-time Pi data in a process schematic in process book or looking at trends in Pi vision, right? So pretty simple, your typical use of, of Pi. But here's a problem with this approach. What you're doing is all these separate systems then create data silos. And it's up to the user to actually build the connections between these different systems and also find a way to centralize all the data in one place. And furthermore, if you're using Pi as just a flat tag-based data historian, you are missing out. You're not leveraging the power of the modern Pi system, which is uh, the historian part is just one component of the modern Pi system, and it's called the Pi Data Archive. And I'll talk about the other components of Pi later on. So think of Pi not just as a historian, but as a data infrastructure. And uh, you'll see why in a bit. Also, you have limited analytics in Excel sheets, spreadsheets, and also if you're taking uh, raw Pi tags into these tools, there's limited automated workflows to do this. And then also, there's limited user access to these tools oftentimes, so there's limited access to data for operational intelligence. So what's the solution, you might say? Okay, um, do we just take all our flat tags and just dump them into the cloud or a data lake? All right, is that, is that a good solution to this problem? So there are problems to it with this. So first of all, as you, like, like you said, um, the data storing part of Pi is not built or ready for data science. There are other parts of the Pi system which are, I'll talk about it in a bit, but if you're just taking flat tags from your data historian up to the cloud, you have problems where you're on also creating now many more data silos, and these, typically these cloud platforms and data lakes don't have any idea of data context, data structure, data quality, data hierarchy, so you're creating a, a bunch of data management challenges, okay? So you might say, okay, so what's changed in Pi that enables you to overcome these issues? 
So in a nutshell, it is pi AF, pi as a framework. Because pi AF enables one to transition from a purely flat tag-based ecosystem. And as you can see, uh, people in an enterprise, if they are not familiar with the tag naming convention, it creates a lot of headaches, okay? And they said, what is this tag? What does this mean? And from going to that to a, a data infrastructure with digital twins, digital models, it's a much better use of Pi. And Pi AF actually is the, the underlying fundamental part of the modern Pi system that enables you to do that. So you can take measured data, real-time data from your data archive, you can bring in metadata from your uh, relational databases, you can bring in uh, calculator data from Pi Analytics, you can bring in application data from, let's say, a process simulation tool, uh, you can bring in a data from um, forecasting tools, even bring in mapping or geospatial data, and basically you centralize it all in Pi AF and create human-friendly attributes. So now that you're not looking at uh, tag 013.pv, you're looking at an actual human-friendly attribute that anyone in the enterprise can be familiar with, okay? And also, you can leverage the power of templates, so you can only configure and change things in one place, roll out to all your assets. So basically, Pi AF is our tool that provides context, structure, uh, hierarchy, and also data quality to your uh, Pi tags. And this is where SigmaFine comes in. Uh, we all heard that SigmaFine has been, been based upon and integrated with Pi AF since day one. So basically the creation of Pi AF actually coincides with the creation of SigmaFine. All right, so now that you've got a good centralized data hub in Pi AF, you can leverage Pi AF with our tool called Pi Vision. I don't know whether you're all familiar with it, but it's our browser-based uh, collaborative visual tool now. Uh, and you can use that for building dashboards and screens for operational intelligence. And take advantage of exception-based reporting, uh, collections, templates, multi-states, all the neat sort of visual capabilities that you have. And also, we can then integrate with other solutions and other visual tools to actually provide richer displays. So for instance, in this case, Petronas integrated Pi Vision with their uh, petroleum experts or PEDEX tools, which are, I think, Gap and Prosper. For those of you who don't know, they're um, uh, well and pipeline simulation uh, visual tools. And these are all configurable by your end users. So no programming or coding required. All right, so everyone talks about data analytics, and we like to talk about, at OSI, we like to have a concept of layers of analytics. And one of the layers we like to talk about is real-time streaming analytics. And we always recommend to do your real-time streaming analytics as close as possible to the raw operational data. And that's what you can actually do in Pi Analytics, which is an, a, another part of the modern Pi server. So I don't know how many, many of you know, but you can do some neat analytics directly in, in Pi. And what Pi AF also does is that enables you to store the results of those calculations back as, back as Pi points and also backfill your calculations to your historical data in the past. Even if you've just created your calculation today, you can look at applying that calculation for a year of historical data, two years, a month, depends on, your, on the time period that you want. And also we've got off-the-shelf integrators, off-the-shelf meaning no coding required, integrators to take your uh, Pi data directly to big data, analytics platforms, you know, machine learning, AI algorithms in Google, Microsoft, or Amazon. So you can always leverage that. And the neat thing is all the context that you've built into uh, your Pi AF you know, attributes are all maintained in, these, uh, uh, in the integrator. And also, oops, one. if you guys like to use Power BI or Tableau or Spotfire, we have also integrators that take your time series data from Pi, integrate it with other metadata to create 
these multidimensional data cubes that you can then feed in directly into Power BI or these biz intelligence tools as well. And then we also have integrators that can take your Pi data directly, uh, and all these, uh, all these data uh, integrations are bi-directional. So you can actually bring data back from Amazon Web Services back into Pi, or uh, from Power BI back into Pi as well. And also we can do bi-directional integration between Pi and other business systems like your maintenance systems from uh, Maximo or SAP or even 3D engineering, engineering tools like Aviva. So we can do that with the modern Pi system. And then also, um, if you as an organization want to share data and collaborate with your vendors, suppliers, or partners, that's all possible through our OSI soft cloud services. So a neat example in a refinery is if you're sharing data between the refinery and a licensor, for instance, Axons, or a catalyst vendor like BESF, they can tell you when there's a catalyst degradation because they have access to your PI data and can even uh, prescribe and say, hey, looks like your catalyst is close to being uh, deactivated or degraded. You probably need to get more catalysts. We can do this via um, or cloud services or what we call uh, Pi Cloud Connect as well. So where are we going in the future, the new future? So we are focusing a lot on uh, edge computing, IoT, and the cloud. And we have a lot of work being done in mobility data access, uh, improving data quality in Pi for data science applications, and also creating be better digital twins. And if you, if there are any questions around that, I can elaborate further. So what does the modern refinery or the refinery of the future look like? You have all these historical data sources right here, uh, but you might have some new data sources. We are working with some companies that are actually using drones um, for remote surveillance, for instance, uh, using, um, you know, interacting, in, integrating with Esri uh, GIS maps, for instance, taking weather data, uh, having edge and IoT uh, devices, and bringing all this into the Pi system where AF is now your centralized data hub. And with AF, you can integrate bi-directionally to all these um, systems and applications and platforms that I mentioned in order to realize more business value from your operational data. And I wanted to focus on the specific aspect of specialist applications, you know, and this is where, you know, Sigma Fine, because it's built natively in Pi AF, there's really great integration, which you guys already know, but this is where Sigma Fine fits into the overall sort of uh, AF centralized data infrastructure model or strategy as well. All right, so, I've mentioned a whole concept of you know, having a real sound data strategy, real-time data strategy. What's the value of getting this right? We have a lot of customer um, success stories, business impacts. I won't go through all the details here, but if you guys want to hear more about it, uh, they are presented at our Pi World user conference so um, where they can actually quantify certain KPIs by uh, looking at certain business cases, be it condition-based maintenance of their equipment, uh, looking at um, integration with other systems, automated workflows, uh, event frames, and so on and so forth. But um, just want to mention that uh, there is real transformative business value to getting a, go a good and implementing a good real-time data strategy. Okay, uh, closing thoughts, um, as I mentioned, Oil and gas operations uh, are really moving towards the future and are collecting more real-time data than ever before, and that's why we need to be embracing uh, new technologies and the term everyone likes to use, digital transformation. But it's got to be done right. And what I mean by that is that, you know, legacy, just using legacy tag-based historians is not enough. You need to have a centralized real-time data strategy and also, you know, everyone wants to talk about big data analytics, but the real value of analytics is, comes from actually performing 
real-time streaming analytics on your raw data. And the raw data is in Pi, and Pi analytics can actually do these real-time streaming calculations, and you can store them back as Pi points as well. And also, the real value comes from automated workflows between Pi and its connected applications like Sigma Fine, because you don't have to build you, you know, custom workflows. It's already automated. And like I said, you know, bidirectional data flow and integration between Pi and Sigma Fine can bring a lot of value to customers and a lot of benefits. And it's been integrated since day one. And pretty much that's it. A data strategy involves moving from a tag-based historian to a centralized uh, asset-based data model to use dashboards and screens and also integrate applications to realize business impacts.